episode 763, Battling Blended Learning, Burnout, and Finding Balance. This is an important topic for all of us because blended learning is so important in today's classroom. But you know what? A lot of teachers are kind of burnout. Here's how you can solve it. Today's sponsor is my favorite screencasting tool, Screencastify. Stay tuned to learn about some cool new features. Try screencastify.com today. It's free. Welcome to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast, hosted by author, educator, speaker, and mom, the cool cat teacher, Vicki Davis. Today, we're talking with Tiffany Wyckoff. She is the co-author of the best-selling book, Blended Learning in Action, as well as being a speaker on innovative learning and leadership. And she is Teach on the Edge on Twitter. And speaking of Teach on the Edge, Tiffany, there are a lot of teachers on the edge about blended learning. There's a little bit maybe of blended learning burnout happening, do you think, with all that's going on? Certainly, I do. I think there's a lot of fatigue there from teachers who had to make such a rapid shift to remote learning. I think one of the things that I'm conscious of is that a lot of teachers might equate that with blended learning. It's definitely, I think people are rightfully on the edge of maybe having a little bit of a tech allergy. And like, I want to get back to face to face and human contact. But I definitely think that there are ways to leverage blended models to bring that balance and actually restore that balance amidst innovation. Yes, I had a teacher who I talked to and said, I'm going to get back to normal. And they literally didn't do anything in Google Classroom. And then when a quarantine happened, they weren't, they was kind of like starting over again, you know? So we do need to partner with our technology, don't we? We do. And I think that the way that we, and we've been talking about this for a long time, Catlin and Jason and I, That blended learning isn't really about the technology, but it's partnering, as you said, with the technology in a way that magnifies what the human in the room can do, right? Because we're only one teacher. Sometimes we're a couple teachers, but we have a lot of students and technology can do certain things that we can't do as one or two people. And then that allows us more time to really do what only teachers can do. So... You talk to teachers all over the world. What is your advice to teachers about blended learning in fall 2021? Well, I think that my overall advice is to use blended learning as a tool for increasing student agency and voice and really driving towards equity. And we do that by letting go or, you know, keeping some of the structures that we saw emerge in remote learning where students did have a little bit more control over the way that they were learning, the times that they were learning. And so really using those models to establish balance and to allow students to drive more of the learning. I think technology is so often aligned, um, maligned rather, as a tool that works against like social emotional learning. And what I see is this amazing intersection of blended learning and social emotional learning. Whereas I, as a teacher, I could do a lot of digital check-ins and get the pulse on how my students are feeling in the class at that moment in a way that you can't do with like exit tickets in the conventional sense. I can also get more time with them if I'm really intentional about putting in place, for example, station rotation where I get small group time. Or if my students are working on a playlist, I can pull my students one-on-one and I can check in with them and I can really give that social emotional support that we know that kids are going to need coming back from this transition. So let technology do what it does best and we do what we do best. Right, exactly. And not all blended learning is that it's not equal. You know, we, we talk a lot about what we call the pack as a compass for if you're doing it right. Because as a teacher and you're trying to innovate and sometimes you're using a new tool, you're putting something digital in play and you're not sure if that's actually having the effect or the outcome that you're striving for. So when we talk about the compass and the pack, we call it, it's like, if you're doing it right, I know I'm personalizing, giving students a chance to kind of co-create with me. I am increasing student agency. I'm giving kids a chance to make real decisions in the mix. I am creating more authentic learning experiences. I'm using the technology to connect my class in a way that's really different to relevant learning. 
I'm increasing connectivity, right? I'm getting kids connected with peers and experts within and beyond the classroom. And then I'm really using technology to increase student creativity in a way that is helping them build future ready skills. That's a lot. (laughs) I mean, some teachers are just like, if I could just get the kids to turn it in, you know? You know what? That's a good point. And I am glad you're saying that because it's really, you don't need to hit them all at the same time. But I think getting one is like, okay, I'm going to work on student agency for a while, or I'm going to work on connectivity because getting kids to turn it in will come when kids are more connected with the learning, right? And so we talk about there's that correlation between engagement and kids actually doing what we expect them to do. And they're really tied together. Getting kids to turn in stuff that they're not excited about or engaged in or part of the process for is just, it's a real struggle. Well, and there's a there's different phases. I mean, we're kind of getting through, I'm in my second full week of teaching students of the onboarding stage where I'm making mm-hmm. sure they can do all the different types of things. And then we're starting to get more creative. So we can't just start right in with this big, huge, massive experience, can we? Don't we have to kind of get them there technically so that they can work with the content? Uh, Certainly. And I would say there's an invitation to have students be part of planning that process and creating it, you know, having students create the how to use this tool video so that can be part of a station where their peers can get refreshers. And that doesn't always put the responsibility back on the teacher. I also think that some things we think we have to have in place at the beginning of the year of like kids coming back in and we have to have our rules in place. We have to have our classroom management flow And I think having students co-create that is a really magical opportunity for them and a way to really set the tone for we're co-creators in this journey together. So what do you think the biggest mistakes are right now that teachers and just schools are making as they try to blend learning? Well, I think that schools are not necessarily rewarding risk-taking in the right way sometimes. And I think it's a big myth that people don't necessarily see. For teachers to innovate and to take risks, there has to be a safe and actually beyond safe, but actually rewarding experience. And so I think that that's a myth sometimes that we see definitely in the work that I'm doing. And then I think for teachers, just that you have to really resist that urge to go back to what's comfortable. And I think what's comfortable wasn't necessarily working for all children and certainly not some of the most vulnerable children. And so it's not anything that we're doing wrong because we were actually taught that those were best practices, but it's really resisting that urge to return to normal. And then I think in blended learning, trying to do everything at once is hard. It would say start small, start with small things that have a big impact. What would be one of those small things? Taking, so we saw a lot of LMS, learning management integration over the transition to remote. So really taking that and saying, you know what, I'm not just going to use that as a way to assign and check grades. I'm going to use that as a communication tool and a grouping tool. I'm going to have my students talking on discussion boards and interacting. That's just a small change in an existing tool that could yield a very big outcome, taking something into a more collaborative space, but it doesn't require learning a whole new tool and structure. Does that make sense? It does. You're saying look for the the wins, the easy wins. Yes, the low-hanging fruit, the things that we talk a lot about building an asset-based mindset. And that asset mindset applies for students and teachers. So when we're coming back, instead of only talking about learning loss or things that we missed from yesteryear of learning, let's talk about the things that we gained. And I think that applies for teachers too. You know, what skills did you learn as a teacher that your students could be really cheerleaders for? Like, yes, we really like that. Let's do more of that and let's do it in a way that is blended. So it's balanced because I think that's what we're missing in remote learning. We didn't have a lot of that balance and that's the opportunity we may get going back. So Tiffany, as you consider, you know, since you've been working remotely, I assume, what are the blended learning concepts that you teach schools or teach teachers that really get them excited in this moment where they say, wow, this is really going to help me? Well, the pack is certainly one. So that pack as the compass to really get it right. And we have a lot of tools that we provide to teachers on how to increase 
each element of the pack. But I would also say we have a mantra at Link at our company and in, in the schools that we work with, connection before content. And that just that simple culture tool, which is not a blended learning thing at all, but that's the why that we use blended learning. We want to increase connection. We want to increase student agency in our classroom. So if we make that commitment of connecting with each other as peers, as teachers, and also putting connection before content in our classroom, we actually get the why first, right? We put the why first. And I think that that's really important beyond the tool. Well, as my listeners know, I always say you have to relate before you educate. That's right. You have to relate before you educate. That's just how it works. So the book is Blended Learning in Action. And Tiffany, thank you so much for your advice because this is so right now for teachers everywhere. Um, We can blend and we have to remember to let the technology do what it does best. We have to do what we do best, but we do want to use it to better connect to our students so that we can connect before content. Thank you, Tiffany. You got it, Vicki. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciated the time. Today's sponsor is Screencastify. This year, I introduced Screencastify the first week of school to all of my students so they could record screencasts. Try screencastify.com today. It is free. Right now, I'm also excited and testing their new features. You know, Screencastify isn't just a screen recorder. You can record, edit, and submit to students quickly as they can to you. The news version of Screencastify has analytics so you can know who is watching and when and more. So head over to screencastify.com today. That is S-C-R-E-E-N. C-A-S-T-I-F-Y dot com. My favorite screencasting tool is Screencastify. Check it out for you and your students. If you enjoyed today's 10-Minute Teacher Podcast, why not subscribe on iTunes? You can also catch up with Vicki on Twitter at Cool Cat Teacher or level up and learn with her blogs and free resources at CoolCatTeacher.com. Thanks for listening.